Two weeks ago, I told you that this KGB source for the Donald Trump uh, blackmail dossier was found dead. That was former Russian KGB chief Oleg Erevinkin found dead in the back of his own car under suspicious circumstances connected to the Trump blackmail file as a possible source of former MI6 agent Christopher Steele. And now it continues. Russian opposition journalist Vladimir Karamurza Jr., who works for an organization called Open Russia, which promotes uh, democracy and human rights in Russia, is all of a sudden suffering from, quote, severe intoxication by an unknown substance, according to Open Russia, apparently poisoned. What is Karamurza known for? Writing books about reforming Russian government uncovering Russian political corruption and working with the U.S. to do so, being closely allied with Boris Nemtsov, an outspoken critic of Vladimir Putin, who was fatally shot just yards from the Kremlin a couple of years ago. Uh, Karamurza was hospitalized on February 2nd. He collapsed. He's now unconscious in critical condition on life support with a ventilator in a Moscow hospital. And this is part of the trend that I've told you about of Russian dissidents of different types being mysteriously harmed by unknown assailants in very, very weird circumstances. This is not the first time that Karamurza has been poisoned. He was also poisoned back in 2015, having the same symptoms. He was given a 5% chance of living by doctors at the time. And coincidentally, yeah, right. Karamurza has been denouncing Russia's ex escalation in Ukraine recently. Uh, Russian federal law enforcement are not investigating the matter. They don't even seem to be taking it seriously. The Russian federal government acted the exact same way when Karamurza was poisoned the first time. And this is a possible test for the Trump administration with regard to whether they'll inquire about this or even mention it. Critics of Putin who were murdered or died mysteriously, I will remind you, starting with, as I mentioned, opposition politician Boris Nemtsov, who was fatally shot outside the Kremlin in 2015. That's number one. Going uh, further to billionaire Boris Berezovsky, who was found dead in his home in 2013. There was human rights lawyer Stanislav Markalov and journalist Anastasia Babarova, who were fatally shot by a mass gunman near the Kremlin in 2009. There was lawyer Sergei Magnitsky, who was killed while in Russian police custody in 2009. Journalist Natalia Estemirova, who was kidnapped and killed by an unknown perpetrator in 2009. Journalist Anna Politkovskaya, who was murdered in her home by hitmen in 06. FSB whistleblower Alexander Litvinenko, who famously was poisoned by FSB agents in 2006. American journalist Paul Klebnikov, who was murdered in his Russian office by an unknown perpetrator in 2004 and politician Sergei Yushenkov, who was murdered by an unknown perpetrator in 2003, hours after he registered his new political party for a parliamentary parliamentary election. All Pat outspoken dissidents or whistleblowers. All coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah, they certainly have a long history of doing this. And while I don't think these two recent attacks um, really give any veracity to the uh, claims made in the Trump Russia dossier, they, they certainly come across as supporting evidence like these people have to be silenced uh, from saying anything further. It's all part of the same broader picture. That's what matters. And even if we're not drawing specific connections between every single thing here, we have a very clear picture. Uh, Russia. Yeah. What else can I say? Today's episode of The David Pakman Show is made possible in part by Warby Parker eyeglasses. Warby Parker recently did the right thing and ditched advertising on right wing conspiracy website Breitbart, pulling their ads off. And you can get the free five day home try on from Warby Parker. Check out their glasses. I use them when I'm not wearing contact lenses. I started with the free at home trial. They send you five pairs of glasses. You see which ones you like. You send them back and whichever one you pick, they will put your prescription into. I like this because I can actually show the glasses to other people and not have to just decide on the spot like in an eyeglass store. The eyeglass industry is controlled by very few corporations that keep the prices very, very high, even over three hundred dollars for prescription glasses. With Warby Parker, they start at just ninety five bucks. Mine costs that, including lenses. 
And for every pair sold, they give a pair to someone in need. So to try the five pairs and support the David Pakman show, go to WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash TDPS.